Just give us a bit of a background on yourself and about your work. Yeah, well, um, I'm coming from um, a tradition of cognitive neuroscience, which is really how do we map uh, the brain systems onto mental processes, behavior, performance. And for a long time, you know, I started out studying cognitive control uh, and attention in the brain, but was really drawn to the study of emotion and pain early on because it's so important for all of our lives and it sort of connects with our everyday life. <laughs> and so tell us a bit about what you're talking about here today. Yeah, um, so what I'm talking about here is um, this idea that we all know people who suffer with chronic pain have a number of different problems with the brain in the larger context of their, their lives. Um, but we really don't understand what are the brain mechanisms that uh, give rise to those changes and how do we measure uh, a person and look at their brain and understand what is it that they're experiencing, where are the problems. Um, chronic pain can be many different kinds of things and many different kinds of pathologies in the body and brain. Um, so how do we actually tell what kind of a problem an individual has? And that can help us to know how to, well, how to treat them and how to understand um, what's otherwise very confusing sometimes if people have multiple different uh, symptoms, you know, pain that spreads across body sites, multiple sensitivities, other kinds of, um, other kinds of, of social and affective issues. And, you know, how do we look at that as a disorder and try to help them, you know, get better uh, instead of sort of throwing up our hands and saying, I, I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> yeah, it's a quite you know. an important thing to try and get right, I suppose. That's right. And I, I think that understanding the brain systems involved and how emotions and pain are connected can help us to unpack that and really understand what's going on. <laughs> And so um, you're speaking, this is, uh, you're one of the first people up at the, at the forum here today, um, but yep. you're speaking later in the week as well. Can you give us a bit of a snapshot into the rest of your talks? Yeah, what's happening? Yeah, so um, let's see, so I've got you know, two other talks coming up, and one talk really focuses on the relationship between acute pain and chronic pain. We know a lot about acute pain. We can study it better in the brain. Um, and chronic pain is more difficult to get a handle on because of the complexity of what's happening with patient populations and, and real people and their various situations. So there have been a couple of different narratives. One narrative about what's happening in the brain is that um, chronic pain is really a totally different system uh, than acute pain or evoked pain. Um, I'm going to challenge that view a little bit. Uh, I think that there are, there are differences, but I think there's also a lot of parallels um, between what's happening in healthy people and what's happening with patients. So certainly we have a lot more to understand, but they're both similarities and differences. Um, and then the other talk is about, well, um, I was given the title of the talk, which is <laughs> why, why do some of my patients feel so much pain that I think, so much more pain than I think they should. <laughs> and. You know, what this talk is going to be about is explaining what's happening in the brain um, beyond pain and, and how uh, there's changes in the prefrontal cortex which change pain sensitivity and they change pain avoidance. But they also have a lot to do with how we think of ourselves in context. So there's a much bigger picture. And I think part of what neuroscience research can do is take that from this kind of nebulous Thing that, oh sure, what you think matters, what you believe matters, how you see the world matters, um, but actually um, try to connect that with neuroscience the, so that you know, if you have a problem um, of maladaptive beliefs and appraisals, you can actually see how that plays out in neuroplastic changes and, and uh, actual brain changes that um, can underlie those symptoms. And the second part of that is that if the systems that are dysregulated with chronic pain are involved in conceptualizing the self and generating emotions and beliefs, um, we can actually affect those things with uh, non-pharmacologic treatments as well as pharmacologic treatments. Um, so psychotherapy can work. And so what we need to do is to understand what are the underlying principles and how do those psychotherapeutic principles map onto the brain. <laughs> Yeah, you're giving the audience a lot to think about. <laughs> so that's it. So psychotherapy works, but we don't really have a good handle on how it works yet. You know, what are the neurological realities of, of uh, 
changes in thought. So that's what that talk is going to be about, and that's been a central focus of my work um, for the last years. You sort of drew the short straw yeah. having to go first, or well, yeah, almost first uh, today. Is it, do you think it went all right? It's good. I hope so. I'll let everybody else be the judge of that. <laughs> yep. Cool. Well, thank you for joining us, and good luck for the rest of the week. Well, thanks very much. Yeah.